All right. Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing? All right. Let's get ready for takeoff. Today, we're flying into the territory of nobody wants to work, the labor market. And today's uh, video that I'm doing is in response to a friend of mine. He, uh, where's my mousey? There it is. Um, he posted something on Facebook about how hard it is for him to find good help. So this is a video response to his post. We're going to read his post. But like I said, we're flying into the territory of the labor shortage. Why aren't people showing up for work? Why does nobody want to work? So we're dedicating this video to Michael Ormsby. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. And he owns the debt company in Springfield, Missouri. So this is a shout out to the debt company. Shout out to Michael Ormsby. And let's also do a shout out to Roast Ready Mix. Because they are right next door to me. And uh, they're probably having similar issues. So we're going to dedicate this video to the debt company. As well as Roast Ready Mix. So. Like I said, we're going to talk about the labor shortage. We're going to really and, uh, uh, dig deep into this so buckle up buttercup because we're getting ready um we're going to read his post he posted this publicly so michael um uh, i am responding to this going to explain to you and other employers out there why is it you can't find help and so uh i've done a lot of research into the labor shortage that's a topic uh, i've covered for the last three or four years I did an updated version just a couple of months ago it's on my YouTube channel somewhere you have to find it it's it's not very old it, it's made like back last month I think I did an updated version so today we're going to focus on a specific area of the labor shortage um, so in response to what Michael has, is saying here I'm going to read his comment and what he had to say. And I think a lot of you out there can relate to this. So let's get right into it. Because um, there are several contributing factors. But first, let's read what Michael Ormsby had to say on fake book. I call it fake book. Because anymore, it's really gotten bad. It's almost the point I don't like being on fake book much anymore. It's all advertisements, advertisements, advertisements. I see very little from my friends. <coughs> but I caught this one. And I'm going, I have a response for this. So we're going to read what he had to say. Let's get right into it. This is a public posting on Facebook. So he said, good morning. Okay. While well, getting my coffee... At Casey's in the morning, it's always a coin toss if the typical work staff shows up or not. True factor. You're not alone, Michael. My friend Tim Palland posted something similar about his experience at Whataburger. Yeah. Yeah, this is, an, this is a, a growing problem. Um, I usually make small talk with the manager about work staff. She tells me stories that I can identify with. Workers call in 60% of the time. Now, I'm 57. In all my years of being in the workforce, I think I've only called in three times. And once is when my wife passed away. Yeah. And that's understandable. She passed away and I called work and said, my wife died. You know, and I, I have to wait for the, um, the county and the sheriff to show up. and yeah, So, yeah, they, yeah. But... There's only like three times I've actually called in in all my years. I'm 57. So, again, calling in, that's not something I do. You know. Um, asked to go home early. Oh, here's... Asked to go home early. Oh, yeah. Uh, even where I work now, this happens. Then they, they complain they don't have a paycheck. How come I'm paid so little? What happened? If you stay to your full time and get the hours that you're scheduled for, you would have a paycheck. Now, going home early every once in a while, I mean, it's something uh, I never do unless my employer says, uh, 
I got to, and we got to cut staff. It's slow right now. I mean, what time did you come in? So I, I came in extra early because I was scheduled extra early. So I'm the first one out because I came in early anyway. So even then, I'm only going home an hour early, and that's with the boss's permission because he's cutting staff. Gets I get it. So, but when you are volunteering to go home early, I want to go home early. You cut out 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. That adds up, folks. That adds up. Every time you go home early, that's money you're not making. If you are a waiter, that's tips you're not making. You're paid for every second you're there. So, you, you, you call in, you go home early, and then you complain your check is short. You complain you didn't make enough. I'm not taking this leather jacket off. It's kind of warm. This is part of the brand and part of the look. Everything from this wooden plane to the decor on the wall, my hair, my jacket, everything is part of the brand. So it's like, you got to show up for work making this video it's something fun i enjoy doing and today's topic comes from michael ormsby and the deck company he and he's the inspiration for today's video when i saw his post yeah so again let's get, get right back into it oh uh, so they asked to go home early they no call no show etc oh yeah yeah the no call no show yeah yeah um i know all about that um, I always notice the manager or one person alone at the store during doing three jobs at once. And Dollar General is the worst. Just when you thought Walmart was bad enough, there can't be anybody worse than Walmart in treating their employees like crap. I'm get a little too close to the microphone here. It's Dollar General. Yeah. Dollar General... It, it, it's horrible. Horrible. I would never work for Dollar General. Uh, Wally World is bad, but Dollar General is way worse. I thought, no, oh, you can't do worse than Walmart. Yes, you can. Um, well, alone in the store doing three jobs at once. Yeah, that's typical. A absolutely. This, this is something I notice with most businesses. I think it's time we put an end to putting up with this type of work ethic. Um, okay, as far as the work ethic, they probably thought the same thing about my generation. I'm Gen X, right? We grew up with three channels. We went outside to play. We went to the arcades. I'm sure the generation ahead of me thought the same that we're thinking of Gen Z or Gen Alpha. Or even the millennials. Every generation thinks this. Man, these kids watch too much TV. Three hours of TV a day. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. We had latchkey kids back then. Um, kids who came home, mom and dad are at work. Latchkey, I'm, I'm a latchkey kid. Because my mom was a nurse, she worked a lot. Do you know my mom was nurse to three presidents? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that Clinton was here. Mom didn't say anything about that till about a year after it happened. She never mentioned it. About a year later, Mom finally told. For, for security reasons, I get it. You know. Um, okay. Okay. Um, this is something I noticed with most businesses. I think it's time to put an end uh, to putting up this type of work ethic. Like I said... They probably thought the same about my generation. We watched too much TV, played too many video games at the arcade, hanging out at the mall. They thought the same thing. Come on, we're teenagers, we're kids. What kind of a work ethic could you possibly have? You still have a lot of growing up to do. Let's give them a little bit of leeway. Come on. Um, Gen Z works harder than you think. Millennials work harder than you think. Every generation has its share of lazy people. I get it. Um, I think it's uh, this time. I had six workers not show up Friday, and it seriously pissed me off. Yeah, that happens a lot, and I think because um, I'm breaking down this. He had six workers not show up. Well, like I said, we're gonna get into 
what is the major contributor to the labor shortage? And um, we're going to get into one specific area, and that is social media as a whole. Social media in and of itself is giving Michael problems. Not just him, but other employers. Kids are playing on their phones, but we're going to get into what's really going on underneath the surface. And... and um, Six workers not show up. There's a lot of contributing factors to this. For instance, uh, okay, let's let's go ahead and continue reading. We're we're going to come back to this, I promise, because we're going to explain what's going on in the labor market. But I I got to finish reading what he wrote here. Um, it seriously pissed me off. A good friend. Uh, told me it's better to be short-staffed than poorly staffed. Yeah, I can see that. You don't know. I was watching um, a, a deal on Dr. Phil, which is going to be part of this uh, uh, broadcast. We may have to break this up into two or three videos uh, in order to upload this. Um, that's the only way to do it. So, Michael, you're going to have to tune into parts two and three, possibly. I may do a podcast version totally audio which will allow me to go into depth because I'm not don't have a time limit because audio is easy to upload because where I'm at I'm only getting 10 bits per second here so that's why we're doing it and you know it's best it's best to break this up into multiple videos anyway okay it's better to be short staffed than poorly staffed yeah because if you're short staffed assuming they're quality workers you'll do okay poorly staffed I was watching like I said I was watching this thing on Dr. Phil about the labor shortage and the trades how this one construction company um, we're going to feature that later on in this video at least part two or three and how he was saying he's got to hire low quality people because he's got no, no other choice there's nobody going to school for the trades there's no welders there's no construction people I mean, there's nobody with skill sets that's not on drugs or have a prison record. I mean, I'd hire someone who's been in prison. As far as I'm concerned, you paid your debt to society, and I'll hire you. Absolutely. You paid your debt. Your debt is paid. You served your prison time, and, and, and that's that. Um, I'm going to take this leather jacket off. I know it's part of the brand, but it's just too hot. These Super Trooper lights are, are wreaking havoc. And so we're just going to take this leather jacket off. Oh, man. Oh, it's too hot. I wear it because, it, like I said, it's part of the look, part of the brand. I got these lights here, these Super Troopers, and boy... Um, um, six workers not show up. Yeah, we read that. So, yeah, you can have low quality workers. And a lot of companies, if you go into Walmart, that's what you're seeing. A lot of low quality and people that just don't give a shit. I'm sorry. I mean, that I mean, I see that everywhere. So, Michael, hang on. And uh, Carmen, Darren, Claire of Roast Ready Mix, <sighs> hang on. Um, and any of the Roast family, Mike Roast, Brian Roast, um, shout out to, to them. They're my next door neighbors anyway. And I'm sure they've got similar problems that Michael's having. This is everywhere. This is, this is widespread. It really is. Um, I hate to be interrupting his, but, he, <clears throat> but every sentence is like I have to respond because... I see this. It's better to be short staffed than poorly staffed. <coughs> Here we go. For the last four years, uh huh, since the pandemic, pandemic, I call it. Yeah. Um. Let's see. For the last four years, I was so busy that I just put anyone in the game to try to get the job done. Yeah. Michael, you're not alone. I mean, I just saw this on Dr. Phil. These construction companies are having to hire people because they have to have bodies. 
but the the quality of the work is is just piss poor. I get it. In reality, what happened was work was subpar <coughs> and not done in a timely manner. True. <clears throat> Take this work of art back here. I was commissioned to do that, and the guy bailed out on me, so I kept it for myself, hanging up in my studio. <clears throat> I would charge about $3,000. This is all done by hand. This here, none of it is AI generated. This is all done by hand. 100%. It would take about two weeks to get this done. Now, I had to do this in a timely manner. Um, so, because if I take a month to do it, it's not profitable even for me. i got to get it done in a, an amount of time, at least a week to two weeks. I can handle that. So, next time someone commissions me to do something, that's going to be 50% down, 50% on delivery. I don't want you to back out on me. Say, oh, I don't have the money and blah, blah, blah. I just spent two weeks, spent multiple hours creating this. $3,000. Is it for sale? I decided to keep it. If someone really wanted it, I mean, I I guess I'd, I'd sell it. But it looks so good, I decided to keep it for myself. Hey, looks good. It's unique. It's one of a kind. You can't buy it at Walmart. Why not? So I benefit no matter what. It's it was a win-win, and that's the way I got to look at. It. So, so I got commissioned again to do something. I'm going to charge fifty percent on deposit, fifty percent on delivery. That way, once you make your deposit, you're not going to back out. Yeah, the job will be done within a week to two weeks, two weeks at the most, because I I want to get on to the next project. It's like when he, Michael builds his decks, he wants to get get it done in a timely fashion so he can move on to the next project. Exactly. I get it. I, I totally understand that. i got to do the same thing. Um, I was so busy that I just put anyone in the game to try to get the job done. Okay, I read that already. In reality, what happened was work was subpar. read that already. Sorry about that, folks. And not done in a timely manner. Blah, blah, blah. The clients were frustrated and ultimately there are some jobs that I had to redo and make it right with the client. Yeah. Michael, you're not alone. Let's continue reading. He had a lot to say. I'm not going to do that anymore. Going forward, if you get three strikes, I'm getting you out of there. Three strikes is a customer complaining or three strikes is an employee not getting the job done right. I'm guessing it's three strikes to the employee not doing the job right. If you get rolled up three times, you're out. <laughs> hey, yeah. Three strikes, you're out. I totally, I, Michael, I'm with you on that one. Um, there are some jobs that I had to redo and make it right with the client. Uh, three strikes, I'm getting you out of there. I worked my ass off for 26 years to build a great company. Yeah, I'm sure you did. And the information I'm going to give you today is going to be very informative to help you move forward. You and anyone else listening to this, that's including the Roast Ready Mix and anyone else who's struggling just to hire people. The information I'm going to give you, you're not going to hear on mainstream news. Why you can't get people hired. There are multiple factors happening here. We're going to focus on one specific one, and that's social media. That's, that's your biggest problem. Your biggest enemy, you're going to go, what? Social media, I don't understand. I understand kids playing on their phones, but there's more to it. Trust me, you're, you're going to sit tight. And if you're trying to make money on social media, sit tight. Because I'm going to break it down why Gen Zers aren't showing up for work. And some of the millennials, too. And now I'm Gen X. We're going to do the Dr. Phil thing. And boy, they were really picking on that Gen Z kid. And I, I rooted for him. Um, okay, uh, there were some jobs I had to redo and make it right. The client, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, to build a great, as employers, it's time that we don't take this type of work ethic anymore. I get you. You shouldn't have to. It's time to change the work ethic. We need to stop... Hiring people that are there for a paycheck do not care about the company or more so themselves. 
Yeah, unfortunately, I, we are living in a... One of the problems I think we're having... I know Walmart, the employees there don't give a shit. They're just there, blah, blah, blah. They drag... Through. I mean, I hear the stories on Reddit. I see the... Um, YouTube videos, I, I worked at Walmart, it was horrible. Minimum pay, minimum effort, you got that attitude going on. Uh, there are some factors, Michael, and anyone else listening, I, I know I'm saying because this is Michael that wrote it, so I'm addressing it to him, and anyone else that has a company, you're struggling to hire people, so this goes out to everyone. But I'm really dedicating this to Michael. because. Uh, but this, like I said, anyone can watch it. If you're struggling, you know, we're up to 20 minutes. We're going to, have to we're going to, at 25 minutes, we're going to cut it off and go to part two. Like, we're going to break this up because uh, it's my day off. <laughs> I got all day. If I had to break this up into three or four videos, because there's a lot of ground to cover here. Um, on the podcast format, when I do the audio version, we're going to read the comments that he, that are posted on this post. Because we'll have time to do that. We're going to do more in-depth on the audio version. So, Michael, wherever you listen to podcasts, just type in my name that you see on Facebook. It should come up wherever platform you listen to podcasts. Hopefully, today I'll, I'll probably record it. Because I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm recording this video, I'm trying to get it done today, and then we're going to do the audio version. Well, it's fresh on my mind, and I'm... And, uh, like I said, I have. I'm just commenting. Um, Asmund Gold does this a lot. He'll watch a little a clip, you know, and he'll just rant about that little clip. That's kind of what I'm doing here to Michael's post. I'm ranting. Uh. Hmm. Hold on. Huh. Uh, I gotta go back here. Go back. Dang it. All right, hold on. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry about that. Got interrupted for a second here. Let's go back to that post. Where was it? There it is. See more. Okay. Mm, make it right. Going forward, blah, 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 20 years, but as employers, it's time that we don't take this type of work ethic anymore. It's time to change the work ethic. I feel like I'm repeating myself. Blooper. Um, we need to stop hiring people that are there for a paycheck, do not care about the company, or more so themselves. I read that already. Sorry about that, folks. I'm not a professional here. It's time to let them starve a little bit and learn, learn the lesson on why, why work ethic is, is important. Teams that win championship play as a team. They are strong in every category and every player does their part to the best of their ability. I'm on a mission to win. Congratulations, Michael. Absolutely. And that's the, the end of that one. And, uh, on the podcast version, we're going to respond to the responses on this. And probably a few other videos on YouTube, uh, comments that I've seen uh, on this topic. And so, um, yeah, yeah. And um, so, okay, we're up to 24 minutes. We're going to pause it. This is the end of part one. We're going to go into part two. And I'm going to show you something from a YouTuber that posted how much he made on YouTube. And I think he was pretty honest about his numbers. And I'm going to show you it. And we're going to talk about what's really happening in the labor market. All right. This is the end of part one. We've read Michael's statement. We're going to respond to it in depth in part two. As far as Dr. Phil, that'll be more probably in part three. So stay tuned for part two. Thank you.